This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid off somewhere beyond the blue. The Good evening. Welcome to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, August the 23rd. We will sing about four songs and have a couple of prayers during this service, and I will deliver a message that I hope will be beneficial to all of us, that's including myself, uh, and that we will have something this evening to think about and to meditate upon. So if you have your songbooks handy, uh, please get them and turn the songbooks to number 200. Our first song is number 200, entitled, Jesus, Thou Joy of Loving Hearts. We will sing verses 1, 3, and 5. Number 200. Okay, are we all ready? Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts, thou fount of light, thou light of men. From all the bliss that earth imparts, we turn unfilled to thee again. On thee we feed the living bread And long to feast upon thee still We drink of thee thy bounden hand Whole streams each thirsting soul can fill on Jesus ever with us stay make all our moments calm and bright chase the dark night of sin away shed hope the world, thy holy light. Just turn one page, one page, to number 202. 202. The title of this song is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. If the music sounds really, really good, it's because the music is by Ludwig von Beethoven. We'll sing all four verses. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. <coughs> Hearts unfold, life flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the doubt of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain. Call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. 
wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depths of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals, join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Turn to number 580. 580. After this song, we'll have a prayer. Five eighty. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I, I just uh, give you thanks that uh, we have this uh, small part of your day that we can devote to you, that we can sing praises to your name, that we can uh, spend a few moments in prayer, and that we can get into your word and hopefully divine a lesson from it that will uh, be beneficial to each one of us. You told us, dear Heavenly Father, to gather together on the first day of the week, and we are fulfilling that obligation to you uh, we know that we had our morning services this morning, but um, uh, this is just a, another opportunity that we have uh, to be with you and to be with one another, however, howbeit through the uh, virtual nature of YouTube. I pray that we would look uh, into our bulletins and at our prayer lists to see those that are on it and uh, just uh, remember them right now. We ask that you would be with the Clayton family as they lost a loved one and they are acquaintances of Ron and Terry. Be with that family in their loss. I pray that you would continue to be with uh, Linda's sister Barbara, that you would continue to be with Elizabeth Estevez as she needs to undergo a, a, a few more tests. Uh, and I pray, dear Heavenly Father, Father especially, that you'd be with George Gonzalez, Miriam's son. He's dealing with uh, several health issues, dear Heavenly Father, and as, uh, I know that perhaps he's come, becoming discouraged. Uh, sometimes we think that uh, things come down upon us and don't understand. Uh, help us, dear Heavenly Father, to keep him on our hearts uh, that we might... Uh, that our, our prayers might reach you on his behalf. Be with us uh, through the remainder of this service 
and through this evening. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And the song before the lesson is number 608. It is a lively song, so I hope you really enjoy it. Number 608, and it is entitled, He Gave Me a Song. He took my burdens all away up to a brighter day. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. A wonderful song. A wonderful, a wonderful song. song I now can sing. Simple In my heart joy he bells me. ring. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. A wonderful song. He gave me a song. To sing about. To sing about. He lifted me. He lifted me. From sin and, sin and doubt, oh praise his name, oh praise his name, he is my king, he is my king. a wonderful song, a wonderful song he, he is, is to me, he is to me, brighter the way he grows every day, walking the heavenly way, he gave me a song, he gave me a song, a wonderful song, a wonderful song, a wonderful a wonderful song. song. I now can sing, praises, praises to him, my king, he gave me a song, he gave me a song, a a wonderful song, he gave me a song to sing about. He lifted me from sin and down. Oh, praise his name. Oh, praise his name. He is my king. A wonderful song. A wonderful song, he is to me. He is to me. I am redeemed no more to die, never to say goodbye. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. A wonderful song. And some of these days in that bare land, sing with a chorus grand. He gave me a song. He gave me a song. A wonderful song. He gave me a song. To sing about. He lifted me, he lifted me from sin and die. Oh, praise his name. He is my king. He is my king. A wonderful song. A wonderful song. He, he is, is to me. He is to me. That concludes our song service. And the lesson for the evening. We are in extraordinary times, aren't we? Um, who knew that 2020 uh, would be like this? Who know that, knew that we would be living under such uh, extraordinary circumstances? And uh, sometimes I think we wrap ourselves up in a kind of a pity party. Like, uh, oh my, I have to quarantine myself. I've got to wear a mask. Uh, even, the, even the stores, if you do go into stores, have marks on the floor uh, six feet apart so that we can socially distance. In our church auditorium uh, here in Northfield, we have the auditorium cordoned off with police tape so that people can be socially distanced from one another. You know what? If the writer of the epistle of James were with us this evening, I think he would be ecstatic. He would be overwhelmed with joy if we read James chapter 1 verse 2, where the words say, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Huh. So, uh, I guess since we are having this overabundance of trials, James would be thrilled. You know, <laughs> that would almost be like having Jeremiah, the guy who wrote Lamentations, uh, being in charge of 
team spirit at a pep rally. It just doesn't seem to make sense. I have a, a short story to share with you. Now, let's see. We're going to stretch this story back to 1984. Let's see, 94, 04, 14. Wow, that's 30. I'd use my fingers to count 36 years. That's 36 years ago. So if you're uh, 40 or younger, uh, you probably don't remember this person or this story that I'm going to share with you. Um, this woman was born in 1902 to Russian Jews who settled in the Chicago area. And uh, she was a manicurist by trade. Uh, but at, at age 81, <laughs> she opened up a new career. It was January 10th, 1984, that the world first saw Clara Peller. Now, you may not remember Clara Peller's name, but she appeared in a television commercial. Her and three of her friends were sitting down at a fast food restaurant and having a hamburger. And the hamburgers were on this huge big bun. And while the three other ladies that were with her were kind of extolling the virtues of the size of the bun, Peller looked in and saw that the piece of meat inside of the bun was rather small compared to the bun. And she declared those famous three words, where's the beef? Do you remember the commercial? Do you know that after that commercial, sales at Wendy's jumped 31% when she declared that question, where's the beef? In the 94 uh, presidential primaries, the candidate who became the candidate, Walter Mondale, used this term in his debates against Gary Hart uh, in his bid for the uh, Democratic nomination. So, <laughs> interestingly enough, what did people want to know? They, want, they wanted to know where the beef in the hamburger was. Well, what I'm going to do tonight, and I hope you saw from my uh, songs, is to make a slight modification. In these unique times that we're in, where's the joy? Where do we reach down and find the joy? Or do we simply grin and bear it? Do we simply say, you know, uh, I guess this too will pass. I'm going to just go ahead and live this out the way I'm supposed to live this out. Do we ignore the world around us? Do we walk through the world in a kind of a rose-tinted glasses motif? Uh, I don't know about you, but for a long period of time, I really missed church services. I preached for, I guess, over three months through the medium of YouTube. I preached into my telephone. One of our members, who is uh, technically astute, uh, we airdropped the message to him. He put all the rest of it together, and we had services on YouTube just kind of as our evening services are. How many of us really miss being with our brothers and sisters? Now, that being a fact, do we ignore the here and now sometimes, uh, but instead look to the future? In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, 
the Apostle Paul writes, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. It's almost like saying, if we hang on long enough, it'll all work out. You know, I could have sung, uh, I've got a mansion over the hilltop. I could have sung some songs that deal with when we all get to heaven. And, and I did that a, a couple of weeks ago. The question is, even though we are going through trying times, is there something better other than knowing that we're going to go to heaven? Is there a way to find joy in times of misery, in times of tribulations? Let's just face it, 2020 is a, not exactly what we expected it to be. There are people who are overwhelmed, people who are unsure what will happen next. They wonder when and if it will ever get back to the way it was, uh, to get back to what we might call normal. Seniors in high school didn't graduate, didn't have their proms. College graduates didn't graduate. Schools ended in April or May, and uh, kids went on virtual learning tours, and thank goodness uh, that our kids are much more astute to this than we are, and they adapted it to it real, real well. Now, if you want to add to all of this, on top of this, we have a presidential election going on. And you know how the candidates just say wonderful things about one another. I digress. It's been proven a long time ago that negative campaigning works better than positive campaigning. And so we have uh, an extra uh, dollop of negativity uh, surrounding our presidential election. And so I asked the question, Christians, what are we supposed to do? First of all, uh, I think what partially what we do is turn to the owner's manual. First of all, there may be a verse or two in the Bible that can help us. Rumor has it that there's some good information there, so let's check it out. Those of you who get my daily devotionals know that when I sign off, I sign off Love Mark and I put down Philippians 4.11. Do you, have you read it before? Philippians 4.11 starts off this way. I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Now, we might hone in on that, that part of the scripture and say to ourselves, what's the key word there? Well, here's the key word. It says, because I have learned. <laughs> Paul didn't have circumstances that he necessarily always had control over, just like we did not have control over this COVID pandemic. And that being said, he learned to be content. It didn't just happen. God didn't sprinkle fairy dust down on him and say, oh, I'm content now. My guess is that the Apostle Paul did not go to a Tony Robbins weekend seminar on positive thinking. Do you know what? It took a lifetime to be content. How many of you exercise? How many of you uh, know <clears throat> what there is about exercise, especially if you do it to get more aerobically fit 
or even to get your muscles working better, uh, that know about pain. How many of you have heard the term, you work out until you feel the burn? How many of you work out and say, no pain, no gain? How many of you have had an injury, like a, a knee replacement or knee surgery, and had to go through rehab? And you go through the pain because you know that there is a light at the end of that tunnel. And so you experience momentary pain so that um, it, you will get better, that you will feel better. And with that being said, I, I think that the same thing uh, with learning to be content with some pain from exercise is finding joy. Sometimes we have to find the joy in the midst of sorrow. And if you're looking for joy, by definition, that means you don't have it. How do you get it? Aha! You follow the Apostle Paul's words. You learn. And the tricky part is how to learn. Now, let's read the rest of that scripture. Now, let's start off with, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Here it is. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Now, we could end it there, and the scripture is, is uh, uh, it about finding joy and learning to find joy in a nutshell. However, he follows it up with a scripture that all of us can quote, because Verse 13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Now, you know what? I don't think I need to tell you that the world, the United States, is kind of in a mess right now. And, uh, you know, I, I am not some uh, guru of any kind, but it is helpful for us to remind ourselves that before this, we were probably having a good time. And I, I would like us to think that when all of this settles down, that we're going to have uh, a good time again. You know, life seems to have an ebb and a flow to it. There are good times, there are bad times. I think this is part of the journey. It's why we opened up with a scripture from James, consider it joy when you face persecutions. Now, you know what? <laughs> there are folks around that kind of look at things and they look up at the clouds and they see the gray clouds and they fa fail to see any silver lining. Perhaps they say, what in the world did I do to deserve this? In Yiddish, they would say, oi vey. Or they would say, oi gewalt. It, it was the Yiddish way of saying, what in the world did I do? Right now, with, there's article after article about the emotional toil that quarantining and self-isolation uh, is having on us. It's almost brutal. We had a, a political convention just this past week. We'll have another one. There are no people at, at. And this is a big deal for political parties to have representatives and all the shouting and whatnot that goes on. And so when you realize that when things happen to us that are somewhat abnormal, it's part of the cycle. Nobody's picking on you. And certainly... You haven't done anything to deserve this. And that is the first step in being content 
and finding joy. The second one is realizing that first, verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, part of the learning curve, I like that term, part of the learning curve is to realize that it's really hard to do this alone. I have been blessed with a wonderful woman that I've been married to for 51 years. It has not been unpleasant to be quarantined with a person that I love so much. And I realize that part of the strength that I derive from living through all this is her strength. Romans chapter 8 verse 31 Ash, it adds a dash of wisdom to all of this. And Paul writes, What then shall we say in response to these things? Is God for us? Who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Let me ask you this question. Is COVID tougher than God? Does the political mudslinging that we're seeing now cover the fact that God loves us? What stops us? Where do we get out of focus? And let me be clear, the times are difficult, and sometimes we think that God may just be lurking out there, uh, and we're wondering what happens. We can turn to our Bibles and see all kinds of encouraging words. It's normal. But understand through it all that God loves us. It's a fact that we will win if we rely on God. Do we need to ask for help? Yes. Where can we go? We can go back to James chapter 1 verse 5. Because after James says, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face persecutions, if we slip down to verse 5, he says, if things aren't going exactly the way you would like them to go. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives it generously to all, without finding fault and it will be given to you. My qualification for all this is maybe we're not wise enough to face it. You know, it was handy to find that verse, wasn't it? Just a couple of down, couple down from the joy verse. Maybe James knew what he was writing about all the time. Apparently, praying helps. What's next? Maybe we can roll back to Philippians and you know where Paul is telling us how he learned to be content. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 14, next verse, he says, Yet it was good of you to share my troubles. One of the reasons that God in his wisdom made churches was that we could have people to share the journey with us. Remember, friendship with one another is the ability to have trouble shared. And you must not only be a person who needs to have his trouble shared with others, that will, but that will share someone else's troubles and listen and be willing to help where you can. And what this does is it leads all of us to doing better. It's a skill, people, that's learned. It doesn't just happen. But the only way to get better at it is, guess what? Just like the exercise, it's practice. We can't exercise, we can't uh, mentally exercise ourselves to aerobic fitness. I really realize we're in difficult times. Let's remember that God loves us. And even when we're feeling somewhat alone, that God loves us. And that Paul tells us there'll be good times and there'll be bad times. It's okay. It's going to happen to everybody on the planet. 
And we're to learn to be content. We're to learn to find that joy. You know, I found it interesting that um, <laughs> I told you the sales of Wendy's rose 31% after this commercial. When the commercial ran its course, Wendy's kind of went down. And it took two full years be before they uh, made their way back up. Three little words turned out to be important. Three little words for Wendy's. Where's the beef? Three little words that we might have for each one of us. Prayer, scripture, and friends. Prayer, scripture, and friends. That's where the joy is. I pray that all of you will be safe. I pray that all of you will be healthy. Let's pray together as we end this service. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we have you in our corner. We're so grateful that we have your words uh, found uh, in your inspired book. And we, we're so grateful that we have the avenue of prayer that we can reach out to you. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to always remember that you're there for us. Help us to remember that our church is there for us. Help us to remember that prayer is available to us. Be with us through the remainder of this evening. Help us to keep you first and foremost in our hearts. Help us to reflect uh, what your son meant to us in realizing when he said that he came to this earth to serve and not be served, that that's what we should be about also. Continue to be with us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. May God bless you all. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid off somewhere behind.